In this video, we are going to understand the basic concept of data path and control and how it can be used to implement complicated digital systems. We are going to take an example where we add a set of numbers together. There are a few questions that need to be answered in such uh, in particular, what is the representation that is used for the numbers, how many bits and so on. And we also need to make a choice on how the adders themselves can be implemented. Is it a chain of adders, a binary tree and so on. And we'll also look at what the critical path implications are for such a design. The next important part is to understand how this can be converted into a sequential circuit. And using a single hardware unit and a register with feedback, we can implement the entire addition on limited amounts of hardware by using appropriate control logic. And of course, we'll have to implement multiplexers to feed the data in successive clock cycles. In general, any computation can be broken up into a combination of two things. One is the data path, what type of arithmetic computations or data manipulations are to be done. And the second is the control. How do we control what happens to what and at what time instance or when? So by taking up an example, we are going to see how we can sort of break up a computation into a combination of a data path whose job is only to do arithmetic computation and a control unit that controls what happens when. The example that we are going to consider is we are given a set of 10 numbers and we need to add them up and give the result. Before we get started with an architecture, we need to answer a few questions. How are the numbers represented? And the simple choice that we can make is we just go ahead with binary digital representation. We then further have to decide, do we handle negative numbers and if so, how? And a common approach would be to use the two's complement method. How many bits should we use? This depends on what the application is, what kind of numbers are being used and so on. So for now, we'll just assume that we have, let's say eight bit numbers. The next question is how many bits do we need to use for the sum? Because after all, when I add 10 eight bit values, the result could be bigger than something that fits within eight bits. In general, if I add 10 values, such values, I could have in the worst case, an increase in size by a factor of 10. And therefore I need log 10 to base two or four bits extra in order to represent the sum. For the time being, we are going to assume that all of that has already been taken care of and focus only on the problem of implementing the hardware itself. The next question that we need to answer is, how are the numbers going to be supplied to us? And what we are going to do to start with at least is to assume that all the inputs are parallelly available to us as some kind of input wires. It is also possible to assume that we could get them sequentially, one per clock cycle. And the next question that happens is what, that we need to answer is what happens to the output? Is it just a bunch of wires? Is it a port on the module that we design? Or do we need to store it in a register and give some kind of a ready signal to show that we have completed our operations? Let's start with the most simple and obvious way of implementing addition. Take the numbers two at a time, add x1 plus x2, to that sum add x3, then x4 and so on until we get to x10. In this way, each of these adder modules, we assume has already been implemented in some kind of hardware. We could either have very log code for doing this, which get, then gets synthesized, or we could directly try and implement a set of full adders and chain them together in order to implement multiple bit addition. Right now, we are just going to assume that the addition and such modules are fundamentally well known and that any compiler that we have is already capable of implementing such basic modules. In such a case, the critical path, assuming that we wanted to implement this as part of a larger system, would be through the entire chain of adders. And since there would be nine such adders, the critical path would be nine times the delay of a single adder module. And the delay through a single adder module in turn would essentially consist of the total delay or the worst case delay when going through all the bits of the adder. So if I'm trying to add two 8-bit numbers, 
I could potentially have a situation where my carry needs to ripple through all the eight bits. That would probably correspond to the critical path for a single adder and would determine the TA. Nine times TA would then be the critical path for this overall tree of adders that we are creating. Is there a better architecture that would result in a lower critical path? Yes, we could go about adding the numbers two at a time. There was no reason to add x3 to the sum of x1 plus x2 and then add x4, then add x5 and so on. While I was doing x1 plus x2, I could simultaneously also have arranged for x3 plus x4 to be computed and then combine the results. This essentially will happen in log 10 to base 2 stages because at each stage I would be halving the number of values to be added. And therefore the critical path would become ceiling of log 10 to base 2 or 4 times TA. Now let's look at a completely different architecture that allows us to do the same operation. We are once again trying to add the set of 10 numbers, but now we are given only a single adder to work with. However, we are also given a register. So what we do is that we take the output of the adder and store it into a register and take that output of the register and feed it back as one of the inputs to the adder. Assume that the initial value stored in the register is zero and we now provide the input x1 as the other input to the adder. Immediately that means that the adder after some combinational delay will generate x1 plus zero equal to x1 as its output. We now wait for the next clock edge at which point the value x1 goes through to the output of the register which means it now comes through as the other input to the adder where we have uh, to the as the top input to the adder and the bottom input to the adder is now changed to x2. Once again after some combinational delay the sum x1 plus x2 appears at the output of the adder and we are ready for the next clock edge. Proceed like this, x1 plus x2 comes through to the output of the register, x1 plus x2 plus x3 is now the output of the adder because we have changed the input to x3. We can keep doing this and after several stages, we'll find that we'll effectively have x1 plus x2 all the way up to x10 at the output of the adder. But now what do we do? We don't want to continue adding more values to it, which means that at this particular stage, we can take this sum x1 plus x2 up to x10 as this can be stored away somewhere and at the same time we break the feedback loop temporarily for this one clock cycle, set this top input of the adder to zero and provide the next set of inputs. The assumption here is that after having added 10 numbers, I am then interested in adding another 10 numbers. After all, otherwise I would not be building a circuit to do this. I would just add them once and for all. The whole idea of building a circuit is that this is something you want to do, want to do repeated, repeatedly. So the x1 corresponding to the next set now comes in, is added to the zero, which has come as a result of breaking the loop, thereby resetting the loop. And once again, x1, the new x1 is now at the output of the adder, while the old sum is at the output of the register. In the next clock cycle, that sum will get replaced by the value x1, which will then add to the new value of x2 and so on. We will once again replace the loop and the computation starts again. What have we done over here? Effectively, what we have got is a setup where a single adder, a register, and some amount of control logic, which basically tells us that the x1, x2, etc., have to be applied one after another to the bottom input of the adder and that at specific time instance we need to break the loop and supply a zero to reset the sum and also that the sum itself needs to be taken out at a specific time instant. All of these pieces of information come together and need to uh, and basically constitute the control logic part of the circuit that we have just implemented. So overall to summarize, what we have over here is a data path that consisted of an adder and a register and a control which had multiple units. We needed a counter to keep track of the count between one and 10 and decide which of the inputs needs to come through to the bottom input of the adder. We could think of this as being some kind of a finite state machine. That is to say, I am in an initial reset state and 
once I get out of that and get a, some kind of a start signal, I now go into a new state where I count from one to 10, get each of the inputs, add them. And after I have done with the entire thing, I now generate a signal that says, okay, I'm done and I'm ready to accept a new set of inputs. So you can see how this simple structure where we basically used an adder, a register and some surrounding control logic effectively constitutes a data path and control that can be used in order to increment just the sum of 10 numbers. Obviously by itself, this is not very interesting, but it sets the stage for us to try and generalize this problem. 